I remember actually when the moment when I realized I was being misguided by people. You know, nice people, good people, but not people who were actually able to help me make a sale on Facebook or LinkedIn or on my blog. And I realized today that having solved the puzzle for myself, I could help business owners and executives to make social media sell for them too. At the end of the day, there are three practical success principles that always create sales for social media marketers. And this is what I've learned after spending a year interviewing people who are generating leads, making sales, and increasing loyalty with social media. Now here's the crazy part. Crazy good. <laughs> what these businesses are discovering is really inspiring. It's motivating me and is guiding me to get what I want from social media marketing, sales. Right? And, and that is why I wrote this book and why I'm jetting around the globe speaking about the good news and letting people know. Um, because what I've learned is not only exciting and inspirational, it's super practical. And I'm excited to be the only guy out there talking about why most Facebook programs or blogs or whatever fail to sell goods and services and exactly what to do about it. Hi, this is Alan Kahn. Uh, this is a short version of the introduction to a session I gave uh, for the uh, Higher Education Academy on Digital Literacies uh, at the London School of Economics earlier this week. So uh, this isn't the full version, um, but this is just uh, the prelude to a discussion on uh, digital literacies. And the title is, as you can see, Social Media's Challenges for Staff and Students. So I'm an extensive uh, user of social media. I have been um, really since the birth of the World Wide Web and um, I write on a variety of topics uh, as well as education. I write on a number of science topics uh, and you can find out more information at the addresses on this slide. So the first question um, I want to ask is what digital literacy is. And um, the problem I have with this term, which is very trendy at the moment, is that um, I I'm not sure that the digital modifier is at all helpful. Um, Dave uh, White, for example, talks about uh, us being in the post-digital age um, uh, in educational terms. Um, and uh, I know Dave has given a talk recently, um, also at LSE, where he says, well, we don't talk about library-enhanced learning, so why are we talking about e-learning or digital literacy? So really, I think we need to be asking ourselves what literacy is, and let's forget about this digital nonsense. If you want to talk about information literacy, I think we're on much firmer ground because I think there is a much clearer definition and, more importantly, a much clearer understanding of what we mean by that. But I don't think the digital literacy term is helpful at all. But insofar as it exists and it's a thing, then we have to deal with it. So I've written quite a lot about digital literacies, and you can see that at the URL uh, on this slide. Um, but my understanding of digital literacies looks something like this. We start off at the lowest level with competencies. And competencies, of course, are the things that we can measure, either through multiple choice questions or getting students to write about them or whatever it might be. Digital skills are what we really want people to do. So skills are the skills, the, the, the ability to use certain tools. Um, and literacies are a much higher order thing, which go beyond skills, a more inherent understanding um, of, uh, of, of, of what we're talking about here. And yet, uh, more than 90% of the time when I hear people talking about digital literacies, they're not talking about what I think of as literacies. They're talking about competencies or skills. So I think there's a real problem with this. Unfortunately, I'm not alone. Um, I'm not the only person who um, thinks that the term is uh, unwise. Um, Dean Groom also thinks the same thing, and many other people do too. Uh, Dean thinks that it's actually a manipulative term, and he doesn't like the, um, the, the overtones. So there is no question that digital literacy is a thing because we've made it that. We've talked about it. So we've talked ourselves into a corner. So we need to deal with it. 
And if you want to understand more about digital literacy, uh, one of the most striking experiences I've had recently is Dana Boyd's recent book, uh, It's Complicated. Now, Dana Boyd writes about um, American teenagers predominantly, but not exclusively, using Facebook, also other social media sites. And that's quite a long way from uh, the formalized situation of the use of social media in education. But nevertheless, um, uh, I, I think the careful ethnographic work that she's done over many years really points up the true nature of what we're dealing with here. And I would sum up um, Boyd's work and, and, and her picture of social media in this term. It's, it's nuanced, okay? Now, if you think about educational tools, if you think about tools such as Blackboard, I think one of the terms you would certainly not apply to them is nuanced. So, as with so much else, um, uh, uh, this is it's important that we focus on what's important. And what is important is the pedagogy, not the technology. So if you are uh, talking about digital literacy or thinking about digital literacy and you find yourself talking about skills and competencies and tools, then I don't really think you're talking about digital literacy at all. You're talking about technology and you're probably not talking about pedagogy. So this preamble was intended to uh, lead to a uh, discussion of the following points about online identity, uh, about the problems of working online, the boundaries of different types of work. Um, uh, are there different, is there one digital literacy or are there many in different disciplines? How policies and external forces affect these? And, and hopefully to finish on a positive note to share issues about best practice. And in the HEA meeting at LSE we had a very good discussion on that. Um, so hopefully um, I've uh, given you some thoughts uh, that might be valuable to you. So thanks very much.